Uh, hi, hello, it's me. I think we're back. I mean, uh, not back. We're just starting. I definitely didn't just do a stream in which I showed files uh, with sensitive software license information in them. Definitely didn't do that. Definitely nobody ever saw it. Deleted all record of it. That definitely didn't happen. Hi, it's me, Scott. Um, we're going to do a little more MIDI stuff today. It's got to be a relatively short stream because I have a call and not too too long from now. Um, hello, life is yours. Hello, Draklin. Yeah, MIDI stuff. Uh, where did we end yesterday? Yesterday we ended where we made a terrible little instrument and then that terrible little instrument could talk to Node.js and then that could talk via MIDI to a web MIDI browser and that was okay. The thing I got hung up on was like, what then? Like, then what am I gonna do? Because, well, let's just start making some notes, I think. Oh God, you hacked my mainframe. You got my you got my one month temporary license for some expensive software. Oh no. An LED strip visualizer on my key position. Well, it's funny you should mention that because I actually have been doing that very thing for another project, but it's a secret, so I can't do that one on stream. Uh, it's not a super secret, but it's I can't work it on stream. Okay, so let's go over here. So like, we just want some notes. So like our current architecture is basically um, sensors to, can you see this at all? Can I, is there an easy way for me to zoom this without like some global setting in Visual Studio Code? Control plus plus, does that work in here? Oh, but that's the whole interface. But maybe that's fine. Okay, a very big, silly interface. Okay, so we got sensors. We got Arduino. We got a... Um, we'll just make like a little... This is using Fermata. No, that's not true. The sensors are talking directly. We got Arduino. The Arduino is speaking for Mata. And it's talking to Node. And then Node is talking to MIDI land. So that's where we got currently. And it's not too bad. It's okay. The uh, big issue, however, in my opinion, is once you want to start doing musical things, because the idea here, again, is like we want to make virtual instruments. Or, or weird digital in, in, uh, instruments and then have sort of a virtual connection to the audio land. So um, to kind of decouple these things. So if we say like, this is our hardware zone and this is our software zone, more or less, there's software here, of course, but really this uh, software, like we said, let's just, I'm not very good at these kind of charts. I kind of want to make some cool charts. Like that's our hardware zone. And over here's our software zone. And then like over here is our audio zone. Look at my cool chart. It's not that cool. Something like that. And then, so these things are a little more decoupled. So it's like, I got hardware stuff going on. It's just gonna be simple from out of stuff. The software logic in like node land here is gonna be um, whatever I want. But some of what I want in there is like, not just audio processing like we did yesterday or, or like MIDI notes of like hit this note at this time. Um, it's gonna be timing like metronomes and maybe step sequencing and things like that require a good clock. And so I was thinking of ways to handle this because we don't get that kind of for free with Node. In, in projects we've done before on stream for audio stuff like that, when we've done it in Unity, we've used Audio Helm. When we've done it in the web browser, we've used uh, Tone.js. And those tools just do a lot of that stuff for you. I've written plenty of metronomes in Unity and they, they work well enough, I think. But it's 
you get a, it's, it's nice to have that stuff done for you and done, done well. So I was just thinking of some other options. So options to say, like that thing we were talking about yesterday, where I was spinning the dial. Maybe we should just play it. Let's just play with it, right? Just as a fun refresher. How do I do it? Uh-oh. Come three didn't work. Why is that? Because it's not plugged in is the primary reason. Uh, that it's not working. Oh, just change font size. Yeah, but that's a global font size, right? It's not like a per file thing. Um, it's okay. I really should dig up that thing where I could write on one side and have markdown appear on the other. Because that was handy. Um, Now I don't know what the normal size is. And there's not just like a view. Oh, it is here. Reset zoom. Yeah, so you're saying do like. Oh, is it, it's in user preferences. Okay, that'll do for now. Some of our options include one that I just learned about today, which I think is actually cool, which is web USB. Um, and then this would get rid of node. It would change this architecture. So we'd actually talk sensors to Arduino and then talk to the browser. So we'd like Arduino to browser here. And that would be pretty cool. Um, the main reason I'm not super interested in that is one, WebUSB only works with certain Arduinos and I only have an Arduino Uno with me. Uh, yeah, yeah, this, this is good. This is good, okay, right? You can see this. Um, I, well, I need like a markdown colorizer, but I haven't saved this file. Okay. Uh, this is a pretty cool thing because then you could just have this Arduino and just plug it in and it would show up as a USD V device in the web browser. Presumably, I've never done this before, um, but I don't have the right Arduino with me and I figure I may as well just use the one I have. I'm not crazy about using the uh, web browser and just in general, just because web browsers are kind of bloated and slow, like maybe, but it's not like my ideal place to be. Um, and those are really the main reasons. Like, oh, and and I don't know that I could use Fermata. I'm not sure that Fermata, how Fermata would fit into this play. So I, I'm not, I think that's a cool option, but I'm not totally sure about it. Um, another option would be an Electron app. And, and an advantage here is my browser, because then I could have Tone.js or whatever in the browser doing all the audio heavy lifting, right? So it's just like, kind of combines my, um, if I'm not confident in doing the audio stuff in Node, I can do that all in the browser, which is pretty cool. Uh, I could do an Electron app. It's a little goofy though, because then I've got to do this, but then I've got to do this. Have like speak via WebSockets to a browser. So it adds another step. And actually at my last prototype for one project, this is what I did, basically. Um, I had the sensors, I think we did some of that on stream actually. Uh, sensors, talk to the Arduino, talk to Node. I think we used Fermata then. Actually not entirely sure, but it, maybe it was. Um, then I talked with WebSockets to the browser, then I spoke over MIDI. But it's such a, it's like all of these hops, kind of unnecessary hops. So. I kind of like this though, because you just, it's an application and you just run it. Now, unfortunately it's an application that wraps a web, a web browser. So it's like also kind of bloated. Um, not great. Uh, so I strongly considered both of those options. I really, the web browser one is pretty awesome because you need no custom software. Like, you know, it's a little bit of a hassle to set up node and all of that. You've got to kind of know what you're doing. 
versus just tell somebody to go like plug in a thing and go to a web page. That's pretty awesome. So this is something I'm very interested in and exploring in the future, but I think now is not the time that I want to do that. Um, uh, yeah, maybe I maybe I could do web. You're probably right. I could probably do web USB also in Electron, but then the 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 there's kind of no re reason to use Electron then because I don't need Node if I have web USB. But I could. Um, but then I have to distribute an application which is easier than Node but harder than just going to a website. So I don't know that there's a huge advantage there. Uh, maybe then. But then I have this other option that's just this. You know, there's always this option is just make a custom thing. And when I was really thinking about what I need, uh, this may do it. This may do, I may be able to do it because I, I basically need, I need a good metronome and I need some like music notation tools. That's, that's kind of all I need. And the thing I was really worried about at the end of the stream yesterday was the metronome. Um, because, you know, well, okay. Music, when you're, when you're playing audio, playing audio files, like I mentioned yesterday, the sample rate's incredibly high. Like it's, it's 192,000 times a second. And so very often in software that deals with audio, um, pretty sure browsers do this. Unity does this, for example. You've got like an audio thread that's only caring about audio. So it can do that stuff as fast as possible. Node is just this big old loop. It's a big, silly loop. There's a lot of really cool asynchronous I.O. things that are handled very efficiently, but it's still just a big old loop. And so my concern kind of instinctively was like, oh man, I don't know if that sounds good for timing. But I've done a little more research and also kind of rationalized what I really need. And when you're talking about a game loop, for example, that game that's gonna run 60 frames a second is, needs to, uh, you gotta execute every 16 millisecond seconds if you're gonna maintain that 60 FPS, right? Um, every 16 milliseconds, you have to do your work to, to keep your frame rate up. And that is, that, that's a pretty big constraint. It's nowhere close, that's only 60 times per second. It's nowhere close to the 192,000 a second. But what I realized is I probably don't care about resolution. I'm not, and I, I'm not handling audio here. I'm handling MIDI here, and I probably don't care, probably don't care about sending MIDI signals at a rate greater than 16th notes. So if I wanna do this thing where we quantize, like, like we looked at yesterday, um, so let's just bring that thing up. This ridiculous friend, our web MIDI keyboard. I don't know how to make it work. How does this work? Did I have to do anything special? Did all the wires come unplugged? Okay, that works. So these notes trigger right now just based on when the input is taming. Uh, uh, the input is triggering. Which, you know, you kind of, you want that in an instrument when you're playing an instrument, but a, but a really common thing in audio software is, is quantization. And it's because, you know, you got your clumsy fingers, maybe you're not the best pianist in the world, like me, who is terrible, and you play slowly or you stumble or whatever, you can use audio software to quantize. And kind of what that means is you take, uh, whoa, what, what's up? Is the web audio too loud? Well, okay, what if I just lower the uh, velocity? What if I do this? I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. It's, it's weird because it seems like it shouldn't be actually louder than my voice. But let me just do that. That'll be a good test. Let's see if the velocity is actually paid attention to. Is that quieter? Have I watched the previous stream? No, I haven't. Is it insanely loud? Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry about the loudness. Oh man, okay, sorry about that. Hopefully this is better. Here's the crazy thing about those streams that I put on YouTube. You're not gonna believe this. Sometimes people watch those. 
I don't know why. I appreciate it, I actually do. Anyone watching this YouTube, super appreciate it. But I'm such a goober and I just ramble all the time and I don't, like, as, as I have demonstrated, uh, when, especially when life is yours around, I can't keep my train of thought. I get distracted by other things. But I hope you enjoy these. You're always very welcome to come watch these live on Twitch um, where I can answer questions and such. Uh, because I don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm not crazy about YouTube comments. I don't really want to get in that world. Okay, very, I apologize about the super loudness. Yeah, I can see now. But I, when I look at my audio meter, it looks like I'm pegging my microphone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the microphone down just a little bit and you tell me what you think about it. I don't know, I don't remember where that is. Well, I know, I know it's generally just fine, but I'm like very close to redlining. So if I get excited, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clip. Like I don't like, I like to at most, I'm, I'm riding right now at loudest in normal speech at about negative 10 decibels. And that feels a little better to me. Is this okay? I don't want to yell. I don't want to disturb my neighbors. Hello, officers! I definitely redlined there. Also, my bitrate, not looking so good. Shoot. Oh yeah, of course I clipped. Uh, okay, I feel a little better about this. Is this too quiet now or does this seem okay? I only changed it a, a very little bit. Is something uploading? I only lowered it just a, just a touch, just a smidgen. Um, I know this is riveting. Where is my, my laptop is stuck in a couch cushion. Are we are we back blazing now? No, it's not you. It's me. My bitrate is terrible right now. Let me see if it's back blaze. Looks like it's back blaze. I need to just fully shut this computer down. This is a problem with a six megabit stream. Maybe I can... Oh, bit rage. I upgraded my internet stream at home before I left Portland and it was, it was worth it. Oof, oof, okay. I'm trying, I'm really trying here. Pausing black back blaze is not working. I'm clicking pause repeatedly. I'm, cl I'm clicking pause as hard as I can. What if I just shut down this machine? Take that back blaze. If you're not gonna let me pause, I would just shut you down. Smart Alec. Okay. Let's see if that's any better. Otherwise, we might be in trouble. Okay. Suddenly looking like I got a good bit rate. 6K, 5.7. Still showing as red, but it seems okay. Yeah, I think it was back plays again, so now I have to get back into that. Remember to shut down black, black plays. Okay, anyway, so I can just push these buttons whenever I want. I can roll the thing up and down whenever I want, but it's not gonna sound rhythmically very musical because those notes are just happening whenever. They're not like nicely paced out like you'd want a song to be. And very frequently in software, like uh, audio recording software that records virtual instruments like MIDI instruments, you will have a quantization button or quantization phase that says like, oh, if this is the, the window for a 16th note, but I accidentally trigger the song, my, my key here, because I'm late, it'll just snap it back. So quantize is like snapping for music, sort of. Um, what I like to do is to do real time quantization, uh, which definitely introduces some delay, certainly, but as you're playing, 
if I'm late on this one, it's like, I just go ahead and snap it to the next one. So you're always snapped to um, whatever, whole note, half note, quarter note, what, whatever you're trying to play at the time. So in thinking about that, and in thinking about the resolution that I'd want, which is a 16th note, which is, you know, it's a note divided into 16ths, obviously. Um, a, a, at, at 60 beats per minute, a quarter note is one second long. An eighth note is half a second. A 16th note is a quarter of a second. So 250 milliseconds. And even if I was running at 120 BPM, which is high, that would be, 125 milliseconds and 125 milliseconds sounds really tiny like it sounds like a tiny fraction of a second i mean it kind of is but it's it's really not it's really not that bad um it's uh did i say that right quarter note one second half note no sorry quarter note one second half note 500 milliseconds 16 note. 250 at 60. Yeah, it's not that bad. Like in terms of like computers looping, 125 milliseconds is a long time. Again, like a 60 game, a, a 60 FPS game loop is 16 milliseconds. So we're like almost an order of magnitude or depending on exactly where we are in that range, like an order of magnitude slower. So that's actually really good. And, and it makes things easy, I think. So I, th I'm after thinking about it more, long story short, I'm now feeling more confident that I can write a, me a metronome that is acceptably accurate uh, at 16 milliseconds, or, or sorry, at a 16th note, which is 60, uh, which is at 60 BPM, 250 milliseconds, it's a long time. I think I did a bad job of explaining that, but basically my clock doesn't have to be super duper accurate. So I did see some article. Here's a weird question. How is Bing auto-completing these when I have explicitly turned off? Like I searched for these things before, right? Isn't this stuff that I searched for yesterday? How does Bing know that? Like I have turned off all the, like my privacy settings should mean that it's never saving searches. Doesn't that seem not good? Privacy on, man, computers suck. They're not good for streaming. Like it's so, it, it, it's so, I so frequently am doing work that involves sensitive data. And I, I have to be paranoid all the time because so much software is so, careless about it. Like, remember the time we were on stream and GitHub just out of nowhere decided to show my phone number? Like, I sent them a stern email and they did actually fix that. But it's just, it's constant. It's constant that uh, desktop software just isn't that, doesn't care that much that people are looking. Although for some reason it will always asterisk, asterisk out passwords, like someone's right over my shoulder, but it will show any amount of other sensitive data. Um, not cool. Yeah, it, it, probably so. Like, yes, the idea of having a work account and a stream account. The problem is I don't really want to maintain two accounts like that. Like so often I'm streaming some part of my work or some little section, but yeah, maybe that's the thing I have to do. Um, it's lame. It's lame that I just can't be more confident in that. And especially since this is a new computer and I had to set it up, I had to remember like, oh, over three years, what are all of the settings that I've tried to change to have better privacy? Um, and you know what, even, even with that work account, stream account, I still have to use like logins all the time for my stuff, you know, like, or that, that, that example of where, um, even in a project that I'm streaming, there still could be sensitive files. Like, I don't know. I, I don't have a great solution for it yet. Yeah, I know. But this this seems so dumb. Like I'm almost certain, am I crazy? I'm almost certain in the settings of Edge, I explicitly went into privacy 
and I and said anytime the browser exits, choose what to clear every time you close the browser. Browsing history is turned on and it says includes auto completions in the address bar. So the more concerning thing then is that it's not local and Microsoft is tracking me, like Bing is tracking me server side somehow. You know what I mean? Like that would also be uh, super uncool. Anyway, what are we gonna do? We're gonna write a clock, I think. So I found a Node.js game loop because people have tried this to solve this problem for accurate game loops. And this one seemed interesting. So this guy, uh, this person actually, I should say, had a solution um, for their game because they wanted to maintain a 60 FPS loop. Uh, again, 16 millisecond interval. So this is what they wrote in 2014. But then later they posted this update that says, hey, JavaScript timers have improved. Maybe this is good. <clears throat> Maybe this is good enough, basically. So I kind of want to just try this because this is more accurate than I need to be really. So th yeah, like if this is more accurate than 16 milliseconds, then I should be fine because I don't really care if I'm, I can be, One twenty five to two fifty, let's say. I don't exactly know. Oh, that really did a beautiful indent. Why did that happen? Are you just mad that we don't have Oh, this looks like it's just a bad pace, I guess. Oh, because I pasted that in the Arduino file. <laughs> that would be why. That can't go in there. Okay, well just for now, because we're not really cleaning stuff up yet. Metornome. I just, I'm just so nervous that one day, because I want to share my work that I do and stream and like try to be helpful to people, I'm gonna accidentally stream some, like stream something that gets me in trouble. Like that is, some super sensitive project or whatever, like. Yeah, and I guess there's not a way around that other than diligence and probably separate accounts. So I don't, I've not used this uh, high resolution time, so I don't actually know how it works. But let's start by just running this thing and let's turn off Somewhere I'm logging something, this. Let's just turn this off and let's just try this timer. Wait. So, looks like there is quite a bit of inconsistency at, like it's definitely jumping quite a bit around the millisecond level. Like, not by a ton, but a bit. Like it looks like overall, it sometimes is below a millisecond, but by like less than a millisecond, but sometimes it's above more, like it's a little slower than a millisecond. So let's try to understand this code because I don't actually know what's going on. Um, so let's figure out what this high resolution time friend is. Yeah, resolution time. Oh, this is the legacy version before big end. So do I want this?
What is it, nanoseconds? That's cool. Okay, so. In nanoseconds. Forgot the second, that's a billionth of a second. That's very accurate, it would seem. Okay, so we will have, and that's why they're dividing by a million here to get milliseconds. Because milli, confusingly, means thousand. The reason million is called million, it's because it's a thousand thousands. That's your fun fact of the day. Um, okay. Does this still function? No, what did I do? Oh, I can't just divide my big int. Why not? I mean, that's very accurate. It's really more accurate than I need. Do I really need to be that? That? High resolution? Because it's gonna be a big int. I don't know much about that. JavaScript, big int. I mean, can I just divide this by million in? This is stupid. I don't, why are you doing this? Okay, so I can divide that. So that's a big int. Decimal. So how can I... Okay, this may be like totally use ridiculous. Like I'm, I may just be totally killing my, um, yeah, I don't want to do this actually. Schedule a timeout. We're just gonna write this ourselves. So, why do they do that? Seems a little weird. I don't know about that notation, but I sort of kind of like it. Um, So we want to do what? We want to, we want to get this time. And we want to, so we'll call loop and we're gonna set another one, set another timeout. 
Oh, they're just using that for timing, not, okay. So I see, well, yeah, let's still do that, sure. This will just give us our delta. So they're not doing anything fancy. They're just, um, with with the high resolution time, they they were just using it for timing. I guess I should have actually read that. Uh, so tick length in milliseconds in our case will be. A thousand divided by four. That'll be sixty BPM. Um, and so we can just say like, let BPM equal sixty. And then if, in this case, it will be um, uh, it'll be what? 60 beats in a minute. So 60 seconds divided by BPM will give you beats per second, right? Is that true? Yeah. Because if this was 120, it would be 0.5, and so on. And then to get 16th notes, I'm going to divide this by four. And then to get milliseconds. Okay, so let's say. Uh, like our interval will be. So let's just check that. So that would be um, for example, 60 uh, divided by 60 divided by four times a thousand is 250. So that's correct for our 16th notes. And if it was 60 divided by 120 divided by four, then times a thousand should be 125, yeah. So this is the number of milliseconds to get 16th notes, basically. Um, if, if we want to fire off at 16th notes. Oh, whatever, I don't really care that much. So I'm gonna delta time equal And then we have to call it, of course. Did a bad job. Oh yeah.
How do I need to set these to zero big ints? Okay, so two fifty. So we're th we're within a millisecond. which is pretty good. I mean, the question is just, is that accurate enough? It probably is. We're one millisecond off. Like we'd have less, less than a 1% variation. I'm, I'm, I'm a little surprised that it's that off though, I guess, like. So am I screwing stuff up by doing this? Can I just do like, see the big ant? Oh, did I need like a big decimal? Sure. Uh, that's probably a thing, right? rounding. Wait, why is that 120 and not 125? What do I do? Oh yeah, because it's supposed to be this. So... I saw some sixes in there, which is not good. And sometimes we're off by two milliseconds. Slow. So we're basically off, no, not two milliseconds. That's like 1.4 milliseconds. And in this case, it's like 0.3 milliseconds. So very occasionally, we're too early, which is funny. Well, not very occasionally, very pretty frequently, but by, by like a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. Like we're like 0 0.05, 0 0.05 milliseconds early there. The lateness though, 1.3. So we could do delta time minus interval, maybe. Oh, we can't, our interval's not a big int. Oh, you can't give a big int to your timer. Okay, that's fine, whatever.
That's why it'll be my million. Keep adding zeros. Okay, so this is our error. So our error is pretty, pretty small. What's funny is like, it's not even, it's just the way the timers work because the errors doesn't look that different at 32 beats per minute. It's still usually under one millisecond. Messages to check. Waiting for important deliveries. But not food. Where's the food delivery? Okay. Okay, so I think. What do I think? I think that might be good enough. see maybe we can find something that's like midi clock accuracy I'm just curious there's like some You know, it's like, the, so the, what we want is for these to be perfect, right? We want these to be all zeros, like there's no, um, This is just going to be Chrome accuracy. I'm a little curious. If like different node or different hardware would be different. Um, I mean, yeah, one, one idea is to write my own loop. Like I could write my own loop and just watch to Pass a threshold.
you know, like I could just have my own insane loop that's just looping away. And maybe I could try to use big int to be more accurate, but that seems unlikely that I would be. Guess I can try. I mean, this is going to be really s synchronous. It's going to work at all. Can you do this? Uh, like I want, um, so I want current time last time and I still want to do this in the middle. And I just want to say, um, last time is greater than or equal to whatever my interval is. Only then are we going to set it, set last time? All right. It's probably not right. Oh no, I can't kill it? Oh, okay, yeah, okay. What did I do wrong here? What did I do wrong? Current time. That's current time and last time. Oh, right. This is interval times a million. Those numbers seem very wrong. This should be my interval. Does that make my interval number two bigger than I wouldn't think so. I mean, we looked very accurate in millisecond land, but this, I don't, I don't think I can actually do this, right? This is gonna block everything. You can just have like an arbitrary while loop in node, can you? Can you do that? Um, okay, but why is this so wrong? That's times a million. Interval not right. So these numbers look more accurate, kinda. But I don't know if I can actually do this, you know? I don't know if it's actually okay. What is my interval? Yeah, so why is 
125 times a million. Did I not do that before? Okay. Wait, that's not right. Where's this? We're getting 125 now. Oh, because I, I did 30 second notes. Good, okay. Okay, so that looks more accurate, but can I have like an arbitrary infinite loop in a node file? Like, I guess you can, you can do that thing that's like the run immediate thing, right? Um, I forgot what it's called though. To basically say, call this right now. Yeah, so I would have like, sort of the same jam. I have a call in not too long. Um, what I would say is if this is true, no, just always, I just would always do set immediate, right? So instead of doing this, I would say like, call this loop as fast as you possibly can. But I don't know, how, like, should I really use that? Is this a thing I can do? I don't know. I don't actually know what's the like real answer here. Because I think that's just saying run this as fast as you possibly can. So my async stuff happened. Like I got serial data. Well, that looks like a pretty, pretty freaking accurate clock. But should I not do that? that like a thing you shouldn't do? So like, is this set timeout zero? Is this equivalent basically just like always run this? No, that's slower. Like saying run that as fast as you can. Set immediate seems to be faster. I'm not entirely sure if there's some reason I shouldn't do that. Um, 
Well, that looks, if this is the thing I can do, and it's not like a bad idea for some reason. Um, then I feel like it's pretty good. I don't know why it took me an hour to write a timer, but here we are. Oh, this is a weird. I guess this actually counts as a Visual Studio Code thread because it's run in this editor. So if I'm going, if this is the Windows console host, if it's here, is it you? Like inside Visual Studio Code, this? Is that what I'm looking at? Or is there some other node process I can look at? Must be you. So that's pretty, that's not insubstantial CPU usage just to have a clock. 25% CPU to make a clock tick. But like, that's a really important clock. <laughs> okay, so, but then the, the, what's the set timeout version? That's not as accurate. One percent. So that set immediate is real expensive. And set timeout is always. I could. I guess I could say like, set timeout. Check every millisecond to see if you're the millisecond that matters. Yeah, that's like point one percent. Okay, so either I am, even with zero, that's funny. Either I'm using point, like a fraction of the CPU, point, point five percent, point three percent. Sometimes it actually falls to zero while it's doing this. Um, or I'm getting a beautiful clock, just a stunningly beautiful clock, but <laughs> it is destroying the GPU to do so. I like my beautiful clock. Uh, okay, let's say, let's just keep the the clock that's accurate to within one and a half milliseconds, but takes 0.1 CPU. I didn't mean to spend this whole time working on this clock. So in here, just to just to like start roughing out the ideas, like if this is our loop, you know, we would do we would do our stuff. In here, we would say something like, um, how would we want to do this? So this would be like our, what do we call that? Like. That's a word. Subdivision. So this would be like int subdivision 
count and then int yeet count I think some division is one word or two words. I think it's one word. So basically we would say, um, we would want to fire like the 16 note every time, but we would say like if subdivision count mod four equals zero, then increase the beat count. And probably reset the subdivision. And then we could also like track the measure and all that kind of stuff if we wanted to. And do like console.log. You're not an integer, you're a let. That's not good. First of all, only do this in here. That was right. It's just like at the log before I. All right, because it's like we've got a new subdivision. Let's turn this off for a minute. So this will give us the sixteenth notes and the beat that we're on. Um, we wanted the eighth notes. We'd want like to say maybe something very similar. Well, at least that's when we know there's an eighth note. I don't know if we actually care. We just want to maybe fire an event that says eighth note event. And we wanted we could do 30 seconds. There's not really a reason not to, I guess, just to have it in the system. Thirty seconds count. Thirty 
And then we would say 30 second count, mod two, it's a 16th, mod four, mod eight, and it's a note. So, given all of that, and knowing we want to stop the stream very soon, we will now do this thing. Like if we wanted every No, that's not a hole, it's a quarter. So that's playing every quarter note. Oh. So as I turn this now, it will only play in the quarter notes while I turn that. We could make it, so that is a, this is a, yeah, this is still 60 BPM, which I think it's okay if we're gonna go all the way to 32. So that's what a uh, whole note, no, a quarter note sounds like. Here's our eighth notes. making a bad instrument. I'm actually I'm adding to the bad instrument. So right now I'm turning this. Okay, so that is our eighth notes. And if we try sixteenth notes, Faster. Oh, because this was supposed to be four. Well, that was too fast on eighth. Eighth should actually sound like this. That should be two per second. That should be two per second. Is it really two per second? One, two, one, two, one, two. I think it is. Okay. So, oops. Yeah. That's eighth notes. Sixteenth should be four per second. Okay, and then thirty second notes. Should just be this. Check every 30 second. What's the shortcut for this? Not that, it's that. This doesn't even need anything, but I'm just gonna scope it just because I want to. 30 second, did you say 30 second? Note or 30 second note. What's the real thing? 30 second note. You don't say, oof. wait, wait, oh, that's an American. Ooh, a dimmy simi quaver. Whoa, that's a way better. A dimmy simi quaver. A semi quaver. A semi fourth. A hemi dimmy simi quaver. Those are good words, British people. Wow. Okay. Oh, I broke everything because I got excited and I lost my pace buffer because I got too excited about the quavers. Okay. Where's our 
keyboard. Alright, life is yours. Are you still there? Wish I could alert you. I'm... I could make another knob that changed the speed. Okay, here I made your... Satisfactory. I think this is better than the one yesterday. <gasps> oh no, I broke it. I see, it's kind of an arpeggio. I mean, an arpeggio would be more of a. We will write an arpeggiator with this, though. That's my guarantee to you. Button for every note, perfect. Okay, I do have to run. I've got to go pick up a package for a call. But, okay, so here's where we've landed on this. That clock is very performant. That's a performant clock, but it, uh, is only accurate to like within a millisecond. So it's not the most accurate. One millisecond inaccuracy, which actually sounded not bad. Um, my really performant version, I mean, unperformant version, the one that took like 25 plus percent of the PU CPU was so accurate. It was so accurate. So, I don't know what to do about that. Oh, I have one more idea. What if I did a set immediate? Can I give a timeout to set immediate? Let me know why you would. But if it ran, we like tried to make sure it only ran every millisecond. I don't know if that's actually true. our very beautiful time. I'm only running this once a millisecond. Task manager. Node. 26% of the CPU. 27. probably don't need to be accurate to, what is that, like somewhere in the microseconds, like, even though I want to, even though that's cool, I think we will stick with the other one. Okay, uh, thank you for joining me. Life is yours, and Draclan, I appreciate it. Mew, mew, V. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, I will stream again very soon. I'm gonna try to get into at least three days a week, if not working towards every day, um, while I am in residency jail. So um, yeah, I think that's it. We'll, oh, thank you for that. Well, anytime, anytime. You're, a, you're an honored guest, life is yours. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Got a little more thinking to do, but I, I, this makes me feel confident that this, this idea is gonna be okay. It's gonna be a little annoying to write some of those music tools that are, that, Tone.js makes it very convenient, but I actually am curious. Maybe I should go use Tone.js and log in the browser and see if I'm, see what the accuracy there is. Like, cause it, presumably they're just, well, I don't know. They may have a more accurate clock from the, the web audio API. I don't, I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. Okay, uh, bye friends. I'll see you next time.